And Obviously, so, you're, you're of a generation that didn't grow up with this. That's right. Um, do you get it? Do you understand what the allure is? Um, not from inside, because you're right. I didn't grow up with video games, and so I don't know uh, exactly what that thrill is. But I've talked to enough video gamers and studied it enough to know that it can, for some people, just be... Uh, you know, engrossing is, is is too weak a word. It's intoxicating. It's mood altering. I mean, people literally talk about getting into the game and hours go by and they don't realize it. Uh, they lose track of time. Uh, they get so engrossed in the game that they, you know, they're, they're, they're screaming at the screen. You know, it's, it's a very, very powerfully interactive, intensive medium. And that's, that's, I think, part of what makes it different. You know, a lot of other forms of, of media uh, are not as, they, they don't require me to be literally a participant. You know, when I'm watching a movie, I'm an observer. When I'm watching a television program, I'm an observer. When I'm playing a video game, I'm not an observer. I'm a participant. I'm directing the action. I'm making the choices. I'm experiencing the results of, you know, of what I do. Uh, and so it really becomes, uh, you know, it can really become very, very engaging and uh, mood altering. And there's a dark side, though. Uh, you know, and, you know, part of what we're learning from the brain research, and is we're just starting to do some of the brain research on this, is that a lot of the same brain circuits that get activated in a chemical addiction get activated in a really good video game. Explain that to me, because you're, you're, you don't shy away from using the word addiction. No, no, and, and, and it's interesting because I'll, for a long time I did, you know, because a lot of people think, well, addiction is one of those overused words, you know, so you call something addiction, oh my gosh, it's the, it's the addiction du jour. And so for a long time I really hesitated to use the word addiction. I started to use it as I started to talk to more and more people who had all of the behavioral characteristics of an addiction. Earlier in my career, I spent a fair amount of my professional life dealing with physical addictions. So mm -hmm. I worked in and directed uh, treatment programs, treatment programs for young people, chemi chemical dependency and alcoholism treatment programs. And so I'm, I'm very familiar with the behavior patterns and the, the, the damage that a chemical addiction can cause in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And over the last six or seven years, I have talked to more and more players and I hear them describe the same behavior patterns, or I've talked to parents, or I've talked to spouses. You know, the woman who basically said to her husband, you have to choose between me and the video game, and he chose the video game. You know, literally destroying relationships. Uh, now, that's not true for all players. Um, it's true for some. Yeah. And for some, it kind of takes over their lives. What is it that people are being addicted to, exactly? Well, I think what they're addicted to is the experience. You know, um, we have, uh, without getting too technical, we have circuits in our brain that are called the reward circuits. And when those circuits get activated, they produce a chemical in the brain called dopamine. Mm -hmm. And it makes us feel really good. Mm -hmm. The more the dopamine is flowing, when, we, when the dopamine is flowing, we feel good. When the dopamine is really flowing, we feel really good. Well, all of the chemicals, the drugs, the alcohol, the nicotine, all of the street drugs that people enjoy or get in trouble with, they, what they all have in common is they all have elevate the, the reward circuits, the dopamine circuits. Uh, I've never talked to anyone ever to Pepto-Bismol. Why? Because <laughs> it doesn't do much for dopamine. Nicotine, alcohol, uh, cocaine, the street drugs, they do. And so that's why people get attracted to them. And for some people, it, it really becomes an obsession. Well, th what we know from some of the early brain research is that video games can stimulate those same circuits, which of course makes sense when we see the behaviors. When people, when, when you see people really enjoying something and they really want to do it, and it starts to, you know, become the, the, the object of, of desire, uh, then we can almost assume that what's going on inside their brain is that those reward circuits are being activated. Well, now we've got the brain research to show, well, that, yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Hmm. And, you know, our, our brain is, 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 is really good at, at getting us to pay particular attention to things that are either painful and scary, 
mm -hmm. or things that are very, very pleasurable. The ones who get involved in the competitive aspect of this, who are they and, and what is such what is so alluring to them about uh, the kids who get involved in competitive gaming are typically kids who of course first prerequisite is they really enjoy it and so they they put a lot of time in on it they're also the kids who are quite skilled and so um, you know other they start to get a lot of the uh, you know a lot of praise from other gamers wow you're really good so they start to develop status, they start to develop a reputation. And because it's something that's so important to them, getting recognized as really good is something that's very, very reinforcing, so then they want to get even better at it. And as they get better at it, then you know they, uh, they, get, they get more approval, they get more recognition, they develop a reputation. And then now with competitive gaming, uh, there are rankings called ladders where they can literally you know, gain notoriety. And then, of course, um, you know, there's the opportunity to enter tournaments, win prize money. And then for very few, but for some, they get so good that they literally uh, get signed to a contract. You know, they get sponsored by, uh, by companies that want to sponsor teams. Now, devil's advocate, what's wrong with that? The, the world is full of young Absolutely. people playing sports who, who follow exactly that same path. Absolutely. Why, why should we be you know, concerned about the, this uh, video games? The, the, the talented young hockey player who puts in hours on the ice and his dream is, becoming a, his dream is to become an NHL hockey player. Uh, so there's nothing necessarily wrong with that unless it, you start to pay such a price in other areas of your life. You know, when something's, when something's causing me a lot of trouble, then the common sense thing would be then to, you know, well, to, to stop or cut back. You know, if I, if I go into the kitchen and touch the hot stove um, and then I keep doing that, you know, after a while you'd scratch your head and say, you know, if this is causing you so much trouble, why do you keep doing it? It doesn't make any sense. Well, if we get, in, you know, if, if we get into any behavior and it's starting to cause us a lot of problems, then common sense would say then, you know, Keep it within reasonable balance so you can enjoy it. Yeah. When some people don't seem to be able to keep it within reasonable bounds, then you start to say, well, you know, it's, then it's starting to have some downside. So in and of itself, uh, I don't think there's anything inherently bad or wrong with, com with competitive gaming. It's when particularly young people get so obsessed with it that they literally start to pay a big price in other areas of their life. And it's easy to get sucked into it, isn't it? It is good. easy to get sucked into it because the games are so engaging, they're so engrossing. And the research shows that a lot of those M-rated games are being bought by parents anyway, right? That's right, yeah. A lot of, you know, a lot of, you know, when we've done research, we find something curious. When we ask parents, you know, do you follow the ratings? Um, parents at a fairly high percentage will say yes. When we ask their kids, do your parents follow the ratings, kids will say, eh, not really. And, and so I think, I think a lot of parents know that the, the, the answer that they're supposed to give is yes, that I follow the ratings. But not all of us are doing it the way we, the way we should. Do parents, are they just clueless about this? Is that what this comes down to, that we as parents don't, haven't spent enough time understanding what I think there's, a, I think there's a couple things. One is that some parents are clueless. We know that from the kids. There are kids who tell us that my parents have no idea what games I play. Yeah. Uh, I think there are some parents who just don't take it seriously. They don't think, you know, in terms of the things that I, you know, some parents will say, in the terms of the things that I have to worry about, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll video games are the least of my worries. At least I know where my child is. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. I know he's downstairs playing video games. And so, you know, they, 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 they don't take it they don't take And what it do you say to those parents? Well, I, I think what I say to those parents is, you know, that we do need to, you know, every generation of parents has to define the word caring to match the world in which we find our kids. Media have become, video games have become a big part of kids' world today. And it can be a good part. This is not an anti-video anti game message. Mm -hmm. Video games aren't bad. They're fun. They're, they're powerful. And there are a lot of great games out there. And with so many good games out there, why do we want our kids to be playing, 
you know, a game where hour after hour they're shooting, killing people, hiring prostitutes, drug dealing. And these are, you know, I'm, I'm describing some of the best-selling, most popular games.